Today I'm going to show you how you can build really cool info banners for your Webflow site like this purple one here at the top. So that whenever you have an announcement to make, like for example if you announce a new sale, an update or a product, you can display it here above the navigation for everyone to see. Additionally, we're going to set this up in a way so that all of the text fields right here are connected to the CMS, which means we can manage these info banners directly from the CMS. We're going to set up this info banners collection together. And as you can see here inside of this collection, I have one item and here we or you or the, your client can manage the banner text, the button text and the button link. And you can also use this active switch to control whether or not the banner should be visible on the live website. And just as a little side note, as a little motivation for you, why this is really important. Whenever I set up this type of info banner in the past for clients, they absolutely loved it. It only took me about 10 to 15 minutes to configure this, but it created so much value for the clients and they were always really happy about it. So that has been my personal experience. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go to the Webflow project and let's have a quick look at what we start with. This is a very simple Webflow project. As we can see in the navigator, there's only one section inside of this project. And this section is the hero section, just so that the content or the page is not empty. Up here at the top, we have the nav bar. And this is also a very simple nav bar. As you can see, there's only a logo and a couple of links. And if we go to the preview, you can see that this nav bar does not even stick to the top of the page, meaning it is 100% static. So very simple nav bar to start with. And we are going to extend this now and build on top of it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to open my navigator, select the page wrapper, and then I'm going to press Control E or Command E on Mac to open the quick finder and add a new div block to the page. And then I drag this div block above the navbar and give it a class of info banner underscore component. Let's also give this a background color. I'm going to give this a background color of purple. I've already prepared this as a variable. Obviously you can choose your own color. Okay, next I'm going to uh, press Command E or Control E again to open the quick finder again and add a text block here inside of this banner component. And then I do the same thing and add a button to this banner component. So now we have the text block and the button. And the text, I'm going to give this a class of info-banner text. And the button, I give it a class of info-banner underscore button. And let's quickly select the banner component again. And I change the typography to have a color of white so that our text is white. Next, I click on the layout section and turn this entire info banner component into a flex component or into a flex wrapper. And then inside of this three by three align grid, I click into the middle so that all of the elements inside of this flex container are aligned in the center, both on the X and on the Y axis. Let's also give this a gap of one rem so that we have a little bit of space here between the text and the button. And I'm also going to add a top and bottom padding so that the button does not touch the top and bottom edge of the banner. For the padding, I think I'm going to choose 0.3 rem. Yes, so let's go with 0.4. I think that looks really good. And now the next thing I'm going to do is to style the button. I click on the button. And for the button, I'm going to make this button white. So I select the background and turn the background white. And for the typography, I want the font color of this button to be purple again. So I select my purple variable here. But in your case, you can, in your case, you can also choose a predefined custom color. And while we are already configuring the typography, I'm going to switch the font weight from 400 to 600 so that the button text is a little more prominent. Let's also change the spacing because I think right now the button is a little too large. So I set a top and bottom padding of 0.25 rem. 
and a left and right padding of 0.75 rem. Perfect. And now I click on borders and give this a border of 0.3 rem. So that the edges or yeah. So that the corners of the button are round. Okay, I think this already looks really good, but now we have to make it responsive so that it looks good on all screen sizes. Let's check it on the tablet view. I think there it looks good, so we don't need to change anything here. Uh, mobile landscape, I think this also looks good. But if we go to mobile portrait, you can see everything looks a little bit squished together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the info banner component and then go to the layout and then change the flex direction from the default, which is horizontal to vertical. And this basically just means that all of the elements will be aligned below each other. And then I change the align option to align left so that everything is aligned to the left, which looks a lot better on mobile. Also on mobile, the gap does not have to be this big. So I change it to 0.5 rem. And while we're at it, I'm also going to add a little more top and bottom spacing, let's say 0.8 rem. And I think that looks a lot better. And now the only thing that I don't like about this is, as you can see, the elements are aligned to the very left of the screen. But we don't want them at the very left of the screen. We only want them to the left of the screen with a little bit of space uh, to, the, to the edge of the screen, like we have with all of our other elements here. And the way I'm going to do this, I have a utility class called Padding Global, which will add a global padding to my section on the left and the right side. Um, if you don't have this utility class, you can also select the info banner component and give it a left and right padding. And then this will be pushed away from the side as well. For example, you could set, set this to 0.25 rem and then it will be pushed to the side. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to just add this padding global utility class here, padding global. And then this left and right padding is automatically applied across all uh, breakpoints. Okay, so now that is all we have to do for the design. I think this looks really good. Next, I'm going to go to the CMS and create a new CMS collection because remember we want to control all of the content here through the CMS. I click on this icon to create a new CMS collection and I give it the name of Info Banners. Um, we have the basic info of name and slug. We can change that, so we just leave it as is. And I'm going to add a custom field of plain text and give it a name of banner text. And let's set the maximum characters to 80 so that people cannot paste too much content inside of here. I save the field, add another field. This is going to be the button text of our banner. So I give it a name of button text, save the field. And then we also need the button link. So I choose link for the field type and give it a name of button link save field. And now the last thing that we have to add is the switch so that we can control which banners should be displayed on the live site. And the switch, I'm going to give this a name of active. Save the field. And then I click on create collection here at the top. So now we have this collection and I can immediately click on this new info banner button to create the first info banner item. For the name, I'm going to choose test banner. For the banner text, I'm going to just put in, put in some placeholder text. For the button text, let's say sign up now. Sign up now. And for the button link, I'm going to put um, HTTPS example.com. And let's also turn the switch on so that it is active. And then I click on create. Okay, now we have this banner and I can close the CMS and we can connect this CMS to the actual page. To do this, I open up the navigator again and click on the page wrapper, Command E or Control E to open the quick finder. And then I add a collection list to the page. And then I drag this above the info banner component. 
Then here you can see inside of the collection list, I have to double click it to connect it to an actual collection. In this case, we only have one CMS collection, the one which we just created called info banners. I choose this. Now it is collected and we can pull the content from the CMS. To do that, now I'm going to take our info banner component that we created and I'm going to drag it into the collection list item. So I drag it into this item right here. And now it is part of the collection list and we can now connect it to the CMS. Okay, I'm going to click on this text right here and then on settings and then on this purple plus icon. And then I get a drop down which shows me all of the dynamic data that I can put in here. In this case, it is our CMS data and I'm going to choose the banner text for this element. Now, as you can see, we get the placeholder text that I just configured in the CMS. Then I click on the button, click on settings, and we do the same thing. I activate this check mark, get URL from info banners. So we want to pull the link uh, of the button from the CMS. I select the field. And in this case, we only have one field called the button link. Then I also want to have the button text pulled from the CMS. So I select this checkbox, get text from info banners, and then choose the button text. And now you can see it says sign up now. Okay, this already looks really good. We have styled the banner, we have built it, and we've connected it to the CMS. But we have to do some optimizations here. Because if I click on this collection list and go to the settings, then you can see there are a couple of additional options. Because right now, the way this would work, if we had multiple info banners, then all of them would show up on the website. Obviously, we do not want that. We only want to show one info banner at a time. So I'm going to select this collection list and in the settings tab, I click on limit items. And then I limit the items to one. So I set the show field to one. Additionally, I'm going to add a filter because remember, we only want to display the info banners that have the active switch turned on. So I, I add a filter and the filter is active is on. So this is the requirement for the banner to show up. And now the CMS connection is almost complete. You can see this banner displays. Let's go this, to the CMS and try to deactivate it. I open the CMS, open the banner, disable the active toggle and click on save. And now you can see the banner is no longer visible. However, now this empty state of the collection list is visible and it says no items found. And obviously we do not want that. If the banner collection list is empty, if no banner is active, then we just don't want to display anything. So that is why we have to select this empty state right here and give it a class of info dash banner underscore empty. And for the layout, I just set it to display none so that it will just not show up on the page. Okay, and now what we can do is we can click on this collection list. You could also give this collection list a couple of classes if you want to be super organized and style all of them. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to press Control Shift and A or Command Shift and A on Mac to turn this into a component. And I'm going to name this component Info Banner. And then I click on Create. And there we have our Info Banner component. And now that it is a component, you can take this info banner and put it anywhere uh, you want on your page, wherever you want this info banner to show up. And let's also take, okay, we first of all, we have to go back to the info banners. I go to the test banner and activate it again so that it shows up. Remember, we just turned this off, click on save again, and now it shows up again. Okay, and now the last thing, the very last thing that I want to do is I want to make this heading, this info banner and the navigation sticky so that it is always visible on the screen. And to do that, I'm just going to select the info banner, then press Control, Alt and G or Command Option and G on Mac. And this wraps the info banner inside of a diff block and then I drag the nav bar also into this div block. And let's call this div block header component, header component. 
And then I set the position of this header component to sticky and set the top value to zero. And this means that now it will always stick to the top of the page. And you can see now that when we scroll down the page, the banner and the navigation are always visible. So this is the basic idea how you can create these type of CMS controlled info banners. And as I told you in my experience, clients really love this. And another way to impress your clients is to build really advanced and cool forms for them. And that is why I have recorded another video a few weeks ago on how you can create really good multi-step forms in Webflow. You can watch this video right here. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike and I wish you a great day. Bye.